they said at one time they couldn't count the keys that he was getting in. I know that he was at least getting at least 200, 200, 300 keys a week. That's how it was going off. Well, see, Al Boy, AZ, and Richie Porter, none of them had nothing that on Rich. Rich was the biggest in Harlem, period. Other boroughs had their own individual big shots, but when it came to Harlem, there was nobody bigger than Rich, especially when you're talking about cocaine. Say to the people who say um, that his family should be straight right now, that his family shouldn't have to want for nothing. I put this in the book. I tell them to kiss my black ass. Because half of them owe, still owe them. When my brother got sick and I sent him home, he left box and box of money. We haven't seen one die. When my brother died, if I didn't have him insurance, he would have never fucking got buried. It took me about five, six years just to uh, uh, accept that Richard died, you hear me? Wow. Wow. It took me that long. It took me that long to, you know, to, uh, uh, not to be Try not to be uh, so angry. It took me a long time. Only body that helped me with it was my mother. Wow. The only thing on my mind was killing, killing all the people who did wrong by him at a critical time. Wow. The last time I heard Richard's voice, he cried. He cried to me on the phone. That's the last time I heard his voice. So you talk about Fritz as the consignment king, you talk about he was what people only could dream of for success in the life of dealing with the streets. I can't say drug dealing was legitimate. Um, of course we was poisoning our neighborhoods. You know, who wasn't back in those times? But at least I could say that the money that Fritz made and the money that we was making, we tried to do what we we tried to do what we could for the neighborhood. I never knew how much my eyes could cry. Oh, uh -huh.